guys it is joe here from joe talks wrestling and it is time uh that time of year once again where we have the pay-per-view that we refuse to talk about a week after it airs it is time for my wwe crown jewel 2019 predictions let's get right into it so kicking things off ladies and gentlemen we have got Mansoor versus Cesaro if those of you aren't familiar with Mansoor he's an NXT wrestler that at Super Showdown won the 50 man battle royal he's from Saudi Arabia that's why he's always brought up to the main roster on the Saudi Arabia shows um, my prediction is for him to win obviously hometown um, but yeah I just think you know him and Cesaro are going to have a really good match Mansoor's a pretty good wrestler so I'm excited to see that match anyways moving on Next up, we have the WWE's largest ever tag team turmoil for the best in the world World Cup trophy. Uh, best tag team in the world is the you know title they're being positioned for. And you guys are going to have to excuse me here because there's so many teams. I have to read it off of my iPad. So we have the New Day, the Viking Raiders, Heavy Machinery, Lucha House Party, Ryder and Hawkins, Revival, OC, Ziggler and Rude, and the B Team. My prediction to win is either the OC or the New Day. Uh, I don't know who to go with. Oh, this is a tricky one. I'm going to make my mind up on the spot. I'm going with the New Day. Considering Kofi just lost the WWE Championship and he's already, like, you know, losing on SmackDown and being back to just, you know, being where he was. I think, you know, WWE can award him with winning. And especially considering Xavier Woods has been injured, it's just, you know, give him something nice. Uh, so, new day to win the best in the world trophy. So, next up, guys, we have the 20 man battle royal for the number one contendership of AJ Styles' United States Championship. Personally, I think it would have been much more cooler and much more like, you know, getting people to watch, uh, getting people intrigued to watch if they had AJ defend his championship in this battle royal. However, they're not doing that. It is for the United States Championship number one contendership. Um, and no one has been announced, I don't think. Um, and people I wouldn't presume are pulling double duty. Normally I pick guys like, you know, Ali or someone like that, Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, etc. But they're all in the tag match. So instead, I am going with my boy, Buddy Murphy, to win the Battle Royal. He was featured on Raw last night uh, in sort of a 24-7 segment that overshadowed his match. However, he did beat R-Truth last night, and I hope that WWE are going to push him. So, I want Buddy Murphy to win the Battle Royal. Moving on. Next up, guys, we have Team Hogan versus Team Flair. Team Hogan consists of Roman Reigns, Ricochet, Rusev, Ali, and Chad Gable, Shorty G, versus Team Flair, which is Randy Orton, King Corbin, Nakamura, Bobby Lashley, and Drew McIntyre. And honestly, guys, I think Team Hogan is winning. I believe the Saudi Arabians, like, you know, the prince, like, knows Hogan more than he knows Flair. So, you know, bet your bottom dollar that they're going to say, baby faces win. Team Hogan wins and, you know, Team Flair's going to lose. I don't know if it's an elimination match or anything, or I think it might just be a normal tag match. It's, it couldn't have come at a worse time, really, considering Survivor Series is a month away. But we're getting a Survivor Series match from Crown Jewel. I'm going with Team Hogan for the win. Next up, we are down to our final three matches now, guys. And this one is probably the biggest on the card uh, when it comes to mainstream media attention. It is the Gypsy King Tyson Fury taking on Braun Strowman. And I will tell you for an absolute fact, there is no way in hell, no way in hell that Tyson Fury is losing this match. Those of you that aren't familiar with Fury, he's an absolute beast in the boxing ring. He's never lost, undefeated. So what on earth makes us think that Braun Strowman is gonna beat him? I believe that, you know, hopefully they protect um, Braun Strowman a little, a little bit, the same way they did with uh, Big Show against Mayweather. Maybe our Fury take off his glove, punch him with some knuckle dusters, knock him out that way or something like that. But um, there's no way in hell that Tyson isn't winning, especially with the paycheck he's receiving. He's definitely beating Braun Strowman. On to the next match. Our next match, ladies and gentlemen, is probably the one with maybe the most build. We shall see. It is the... WWE Championship match with the current champ Brock Lesnar defending against 
Cain Velasquez, the man that beat him for the UFC Heavyweight Championship back in 2010. Velasquez, I don't know if he's going to have Rey Mysterio in his corner, but obviously they've been doing the whole angle of like, you know, Rey's family with Kane and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and firstly, I think Brock is retaining. I don't think that uh, it's way too soon for Cain Velasquez to beat Brock Lesnar. He hasn't even had a match in WWE yet. And honestly, he's he's pretty good. I've seen some of his matches in AAA. Uh, one, I believe, was a triple threat tag team match with Cody. That was really cool. Uh, really enjoyed that match. Cain Velasquez um, doing like Hurricane Ranas and stuff, which is like, wow, you're a big dude. Um, but yeah, so I think it's going to be a pretty decent match. But I do believe that Brock Lesnar is retaining the WWE Championship. Let's move on to the last match. And finally, guys, we have the match I am scared for the most. Um, potentially the main event of the evening. Not too sure how the card's going to pan out yet, but it is The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, taking on Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship after the catastrophe they call Hell in a Cell 2019, where the match was ended due to referee stoppage. A Hell in a Cell match ended on referee stoppage. Um, absolutely ridiculous, but they are obviously doing the rematch now. Um, there's a lot of things going into this that make me really question stuff. Um, one of the stipulations, and I quote, the match can't be stopped under any circumstances, which means if Seth is winning, he has to beat the Fiend clean. Has to beat him. Either a submission or a pin, which no one wants. Seth Rollins is my favourite wrestler, don't get me wrong. I love Seth Rollins, but I don't want him to beat the Fiend, ever. At all. I don't want anyone to beat The Fiend. It's The Fiend. Um, and the other thing that's got me questioning stuff is it's for the Universal Championship and Bray Wyatt is on SmackDown. So how on earth is that going to work? But I am predicting The Fiend to beat Seth Rollins and get switched over to Raw. I don't know if they're going to draft him with anyone, but realistically, even though SmackDown's ratings haven't been great either recently, Raw's just sucked. I mean, this week was pretty, like, you know, this week was all right, but the last couple of weeks, Raw just sucks. Absolutely terrible shows. Um, I wanted to switch it off, to be honest. I was bored, and I think they need the star power of The Fiend, realistically. SmackDown on Fox has many stars. Like, you know, they don't need The Fiend. So I believe Fiend is going to win the Universal title and go to Raw. But those are my crown jewel predictions, guys. It's taking place on Halloween night. Uh, October 31st. I have work that day, but I will be finishing at five. The pay-per-view starts at six, so it's going to be a close one, but I should be all good. I'm skipping Halloween this year uh, to watch the show and do reactions for you guys. So hopefully, hopefully the show isn't a complete letdown. Um, but I definitely don't think they'll be talking about it on Raw. <laughs> Anyways, please be sure to give this video a like, comment and subscribe. I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. You guys have been awesome. Stay tuned for more wrestling content and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.